so your piece was called Revel- Revelry, and it was set up uh, over in the Calde Plaza, yeah. right? Yeah. And and explain to me how first of all how you came about to to make it and and what it was exactly. Yeah, sure. So Revelry is a six foot high, two hundred foot long metal chain link fence. It's a temporary fence, and it's installed on Calder Plaza between City Hall and the Kent County Building. So it goes right down that little alley between the buildings. And I went through a couple different proposal uh, proposals for uh, Art Prize, and during the connection period, uh, Rob App over at Richard App Gallery uh, saw my proposal images and asked me to participate and invited me to go show at Calder Plaza. So on the fence is actually one ton of Mardi Gras beads. And, and where, so did you, where, me, did, where did you get those? Yeah. I'm just curious. Did you like oh, just buy I them from? On, a... Ordered them on the internet. Okay, <laughs> well, like everybody does nowadays, right? Like everybody does. Yeah, right. people, are, people ask me all the time where I got it, and you know, just like a normal consumer, I bought it on the internet. Um, but yeah, the beads represent celebration, and the fence to me represents that line that hap- that uh, is between two sides of a conversation. And here at Art Prize. Everyone's talking about art, and the art conversations are sort of the main highlight of this experience. And I wanted to celebrate those conversations by adding the beads onto the fence. Well, they're definitely talking about your piece, that's for sure, because what eventually happened was people came by, and at some point Saturday, somebody started taking the beads and wearing them, I would imagine, right? Yeah, so there was visible signage at the beginning of the fence, two signages in the middle, and one at the very end. And 200 feet is a long distance, I get that. (laughs) Um, But there was visible signage. And so, you know, maybe the first kind of handful of people were just not caring about it and just decided to sort of take rather than add. And the signage actually says that viewers are encouraged to bring their own beads and add them to the fence to celebrate the conversation. And I was actually on site um, the entire week uh, handing out beads by the handfuls, actually, to people. And I suggested that people could wear them, share them with other people, or add them to the fence. But in no way did I ever say that they could take them from the fence. But my work's about controversial public art. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, everything was very great. And then Saturday afternoon, the public said, no, we will not add, we will subtract. And between one and eight-ish, uh, 25,000 beads were removed from, from the fence. I almost, I mean, it would have been entertaining, you have to admit, to see that social progress of how somebody was the first who was brave enough to go, you know what, I'm just going to grab some of these and then see that kind of spiral out of control. Um, entertaining is a good word. Um, well, not for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I, I was definitely, I scurried around to the corner on the other side of city hall to sort of not watch the whole thing happen. Um, I was still handing out beads and it was happening, but I, you know, eventually I just had to stop and I just had to let the mask kind of, the big crowd just go for it. And I kind of scurried around the corner and just kind of sat there thinking about life and what am I doing here? And, what does it all mean? Um, but it was it was an emotional kind of day, and you know, like a good movie, I'm sure it had it it had a it had its uh, sort of low lows, and then it had its high highs. Which the next day I came back, it was completely empty, but then there were people coming back with beads, and they were bringing them back, which was really cool. So you have had slowly some people start to bring them back. Yes, absolutely. Um, there were a couple uh, media uh, interviews, and that got out there. The story got out there, and folks who had taken beads who didn't even know that that wasn't part of the, the art piece, they came back with some beads, bags of beads, and other people, they didn't even know that people took them, but they heard the story, and so they brought their own beads that they got down in New Orleans and brought it here, and it, now there's more beads at the fence that 
people can take that are on that are in bags, and they can just add them to the fence themselves to participate in that uh, artistic process. I feel bad because I was downtown Saturday and I saw people wearing beads. I had no idea they'd taken them from your fence, and I could have said, "Hey." But I just thought, you know, because you don't know what's going on at other parts of Art Prize, and there's so much art out right. there that, you know, I had no idea right. that your thing even existed until, uh, you know, afterwards, and I saw the story. So let me ask you this. You no, know, I've been, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. Oh, so I've been, I've been handing out these all week, and at one point I got off uh, Calder Plaza. I call it Calder Island. I haven't left Calder Island in like <laughs> a week. But I left Calder Island with uh, a handful of beads. And out of context, not being next to my piece, definitely people were looking and being like, why does that guy have so many beads? Like, what is, what's happening? Where did he get them? How did he get them? So there's definitely, like, a shift that happens as soon as you leave the piece and you're, like, more than 100 feet away. So there's definitely that kind of uh, sort of experience or that uh, questioning and curiosity that you get that wouldn't have happened if you were next to the entry. Well, surely, uh, Jeffrey, um, you know, you've heard of other artists who have who have put, like, I, I think there's a guy named Taurus who, who would take his prints and he would just stack them up in a gallery and, and, and watch as people slowly broke down that social barrier and started taking them. And, and that was part of his plan. So is there is there a side of you that thought this might have happened? Yeah, you know, uh, so Felix Gonzalez Torres, who you're talking yeah. about, Cuban-American artist, he died in 96 of AIDS, actually, and his work was all about sort of that loss that when his partner Ross died in 1991, he wanted to let everyone else feel that loss that he felt. So he's, uh, so Gonzalez Torres is very famous for his takeaway pieces, and he will put 170 pounds of candy, these individual wrapped hard candies with this very shiny silver uh, paper, on into a corner of a gallery. And so in that corner is 170 pounds of candy, which is the ideal weight of Ross's body weight. And he invites the viewer to take one candy as a way to experience the loss that Felix had and the depletion of the body that AIDS had on, on Ross's body. And so it's a very metaphorical experience. It's a very, uh, very amazing sort of touching, respectful kind of way to experience that. And my work, I felt that, you know, I felt that kind of loss on Saturday, but it was very beautiful, and I didn't expect it to happen so quickly. <laughs> I expected it to happen maybe over the course of the 19-day event, but it, it happened within eight hours. So it was just very quick. I wasn't expecting it that to be like that, but, you know, it happened, and I can't control it. You know, yeah. public art, you never know. And this is why public art is made with steel, bronze, or marble, and not shiny plastic. But I see. I, I like that, and you wanted a conversation, and you kind of got one. Did did you not? I mean, I, I think yeah, people. You know, go ahead. Yeah, I absolutely, absolutely. I got. I, it's the conversation is is sticking to art now, and it's uh, rather than oh, I love this. This is free stuff. Now people are talking about <laughs> wow. Let's respect well, the work. Let's be aware of the of the artist's intent. See, here I see it a little differently than you, Jeffrey, and I hope I hope you can see it my way. I maybe they wanted okay. to share in the revelry. Maybe they're like, Oh, this is this is revelry, let's let's be a part of it. And and, and I think art prize this is my third art prize, so I anytime I'm here it's a big celebration and you know, that's why I brought the beads. I wanted to add a little bit to the big party, so and that's the title. There you go. It's revelry. I just yeah. wanted to add the big party and <laughs> You know, I'm so happy that my piece has those multiple layers that people can interpret. Well, you know, it was really interesting because, you know, I, I, I've only seen it in photographs what it looked like before people started taking the beads, but it really had this beautiful layering to it that was really beautiful. And Thank uh, you. Yeah, it, it started off empty by the Calder, and then as you walk through the space between the two buildings, it went from empty to... Uh, these silver beads, and then the silver beads sort of faded into a rainbow chaos, and then the chaos faded into a rainbow spectrum. And it had all, it had this nice little flow as you walk down. Yeah, and it was really just beautiful and cool, but you know what? The people of Grand Rapids want something more abstract. So if you go back <laughs> now, actually, it looks like just kind of an abstract kind of different lines and different shapes, and it's very cool. And uh, yeah, the rainbow was just too literal. 
Grand Rapids like the good abstract expressionist work. <laughs> there you That's go. like a father. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeffrey, uh, first of all, congratulations again on making the final 100. And think, and you, and you know, you have to be to get your work noticed in a, in a city now that has over 1500 pieces of art on display. I mean, you have accomplished something, even though it wasn't probably the way you wanted it to be. Yeah. You know, I'm super excited. I'm just so happy to be here. And Calder Plaza has a lot of really awesome works of art. And I have to also give a big shout out to the weather. The weather was just fantastic this past week. So having people walk around in the sunshine, seeing the peace and the story that has developed, I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. This has been a really amazing experience so far, and it's, like, still only the first week. So I'm really excited about everything. Jeffrey, before I let you go, you, you mentioned you, where are you from uh, before you – I mean, where do you live? Where do you make your home? Yeah, I was uh, born and raised in New Jersey, and now I live in San Francisco. Okay. So what does Art Prize mean to, to, to artists like yourself that you have a chance to, to display stuff like this? Yeah, sure. So it's definitely, number one, an exhibition opportunity. You know, as an artist, I always want to be able to get my work out there, out of my studio and out of my head even. Um, but two, this art prize experience is completely different from most things. I think in the art world, you get an opportunity to have an artist reception maybe one night of the month-long exhibition, and that's kind of the time you talk about your work with the public. But here at Art Prize, any artist has an opportunity to stay as long as they want during the event and talk with everyone. And you never know what sort of level of education someone has about artwork. So there's always a nice way to sort of engage with people who know about Felix Gonzalez Torres or know nothing about it, and they just want to talk about the themes that are, you know, sort of on the surface. And so it's a, just a nice spectrum of different conversations for me as an artist. Well, thanks for sharing some time with us. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. I will talk to you guys soon. And, uh, have a happy art prize.